Hello, my name is Craig Mason from MIPIM. This is a new series called Property Influencers, where we talk to some of the top people in the real estate and property market. I have the pleasure of uh, Dr. Holger Schmieding, Managing Director and Chief Economist of the Berenberg Bank, with us today at MIPIM. Welcome. Thank you. Um, just talk a bit about you know, how you see the economy shaping up and what that means for the property industry as a whole. The world economy is in decent shape at the moment and the chances are good that global economic growth will continue. The major driver of the global economic recovery is monetary policy. We know that fiscal policy is being tightened in some places. We see that oil prices are somewhat a burden. Yes, but we should never forget that monetary policy is more aggressive than it has ever been. Interest rates set by central banks are extremely low. As time passes, the financial system is able to pass this monetary stimulus on to the real economy better and better. So the Western economies are responding to the very strong monetary injection by, well, by growing at a nice speed. Real estate markets are by their very nature volatile. They will always be prone to bubbles. That is partly because the actual building, the construction, takes a long time. So if prices signal that you should build more and you start building more, by the time the building is ready, the market may have changed already. So by their very nature, real estate markets will always be prone to cycles which will include bubbles. But we hopefully have learned in policy management that we should check early on whether we have a conjunction of rapidly rising asset prices and rapid credit growth. If we see these two going together, that would hopefully in the future be a signal for central banks and for regulators to cool it down earlier than they did in the previous decade. From your perspective and from an economic perspective, are there certain things that should be done to look at trying to ensure um, you, know, you don't get caught up in these, in these bubble environments? Uh, the first obvious thing is of course to go for diversification. Either you are highly specialized and you know that you're taking a very high risk by the nature of your business, the high specialization, or if you're a broader investor, be well diversified. That is, keep a foothold even in places which do not look promising at the time because some of the places which look so promising may turn out to be close to bubble state. So that's the first thing. The other thing is to always ask is it a fundamental trend we are following or are we just following the herd? Typically, a market starts to be driven by fundamentals. The country really is good, is improving. The sector is promising. But when everybody gets into it and prices rise for the reason that everybody gets into it, sentiment often turns too euphoric. We are likely to see emerging markets which do have some inflation problem cooling down modestly and probably attracting a bit less capital than before, which also could reflect on their property markets, whereas some of the developed markets, which are now recovering, um, could become more attractive. Core Europe, of course, from Germany to Sweden to Switzerland, is among the prime places of the world. How do you see the, the real estate property market in China at the present? China is very popular, quite some money is trying to get into China and a lot is happening in China. So there are many characteristics in China which suggest there could be bubbles. Having said that, China is a very vast place. You have to pick your locations carefully. If you do not take those which everybody is talking about, then you are likely to find a lot of still promising places in China where valuations are not yet stretched. So I don't think there is this one big Chinese property bubble, but I would not be surprised to learn from economic history in a few years that at the moment we do have a number of regional bubbles in China already, 
which upon bursting could do some regional damage, but which probably are not pronounced enough to bring down the overall economy. So in China, look at what exactly you're doing. The longer term trend is positive, but there are a number of near term risks around. Thank you very much, Mr. Schmeding. You're welcome.